Feels a lonely canyon high above the desert land. They call it Chicote. The flint strikes a steel, a cloud conceals a final stand, and the noble fall of a great meteor. Stay safe, stay warm. Stay free with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. Uh. Oh, hey there. Hey, Bill with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. Hey, stick around. I'm going to teach you all about the whiskey tent. I think you'll get a kick out of this. Ought to get pretty interesting. Well, hey, let's turn this off. Well, that thing, uh, those batteries are good. That lasted all night long. It was a lot of fun. It's nice to have a little, a little music when you're out here camping and something to fall asleep to, you know what I mean? Listen to the news. Uh, this came to me from Jim Snyder. Hell of a gift. A little Jameson uh, pocket radio, and I'm digging a heck out of it. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about the uh, the whiskey tent. How did the whiskey tent get its name? Well, you know, years ago the mountain men would have rendezvous, and that was uh, you know sort of a special time. They would get all their plues, all their beaver pelts together, and take them down to the rendezvous, and of course trade them for uh, necessities. It was all barter and trade back then, not so much currency. But you'd sell your plues, and you'd get your powder and traps, and you know balls and uh, tomahawks, whatever the heck you needed, you know, foo fra, whatever you needed to get you through the next year, next couple of years. And what they do is the rendezvous people, the merchants, they would pack in these things on, on mules and they would have canvas and those big canvas tarps and uh, the whiskey tent it was kind of nice when you had been in rendezvous for a while, maybe you'd spent some of your hard earned earnings on whiskey and need a little place to sleep. You went to the whiskey tent and you usually made one out of a tarp. And uh, you think about canvas, you know, what canvas has meant to us as a people. Without canvas, the Mayflower would have never got here. There would have been no sales for it. And uh, Levi Strauss would have never been able to make, uh, make blue jeans. So canvas really shaped our lives. I'm going to take you around the old whiskey tent and uh, show you how I do it. So that's the, uh, the basic entrance uh, to the old whiskey tent. And plenty spacious and did not take a lot of time to put up. Um, there's no attachment points on this canvas. This is just a plain sheet of canvas, and I'm going to have to explain to you how I do the uh, how I do the attachment points. But it's actually pretty easy. I'll show you my little trick here in just a minute. Okay, well that's uh, that's her from the side. You can see where she ties down. It doesn't really take a lot to put one of these up, and it gives you all the room you could possibly need. But you could still have a little fire, still feel like you're outside. You don't feel as closed in, but if the weather turns bad, you've you've definitely got some options. So that's how I hook her up. Uh, let me show you how I make an attachment point. So that's a typical attachment point. And to do it, what you're going to do is take one of these muzzle loading balls like that and put it up underneath the sheet. And then the knot that you tie, see that knot that you see there that's hooked into it? That's actually adjustable. Um, I did a video on that. It's called the, uh, the One Knot to Rule Them All. And it was all about how one knot can basically do everything you need in bushcraft. But that's what that knot is. I'll give you a, a quick demo on it one more time because you may not have seen that video. But that's what's inside here. That's what's right there is one of these lead caliber uh, muzzle loading balls, which is something you would have likely have had at a rendezvous in the 1800s, huh? So anyway, a while back I broke the uh, strap on my canteen, and uh, I like these kind of canteens. They got uh, a wool covering and they keep the water cold or warm. Doesn't keep it from freezing. So wool canteen definitely way to go. But anyway, I broke the strap, and I had to use my old knot. You know that the one knot to rule them all that I'm always preaching about, and I want to show it to you because it it's very essential for doing this tent. I'm going to try to do it 
with this big rope and I think that might help you see it a little bit better. So basically what you've got here, what you've got is a cue, right? And you take that cue and on one side of it you put two loops. Then you come to the other side and you do a loop. The other side of that the other side of that knot get you a good loop and bring it through. You'll end up with three three distinct nubbits and one crossover like that, okay? And uh, that tightens it all up. And the beauty of this knot is I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. The beauty of this knot is it's fully adjustable. And when you have it dressed right it won't go anywhere. Yeah, there we go. Now it's nice and tight. And so that's how I did my my sling. Fully adjustable. But that's what I used on this. You just put the uh, the muzzleloader ball through and uh, put that knot around it. Now it's adjustable. Um, as the tent sags and everything, you can fully adjust it. Makes it kind of easy. Uh, what else did I want to do? Oh, I want to give a big thank you to my sister in bushcraft to uh, Vanessa because the knife came that I won. Uh, she had a giveaway a while back when she launched uh, you know her channel, her new English channel Wild uh, Woman Bushcraft and uh, I did, did end up getting the knife and here it is. There it is right there. If you can see that on camera or not. But man what a great knife. I've been using it up here and uh, it's been holding up pretty good man. It's a heck of a nice knife that I got from my sister Vanessa in Bushcraft so because of that, I named the knife Vanessa, huh? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, heck of a nice deal. So anyway, till the next time I see you, this is Bill with Chicote Outdoor Recreation. You stay safe, you stay warm, you keep yourself free. I'm Carlton Fisk, and I don't smoke, but I still enjoy tobacco. I've joined the millions of guys who use smokeless tobacco, like Copenhagen. Just a little gives me great tobacco flavor. Whether I'm swinging an axe in New Hampshire or a bat in Boston. So try Copenhagen, Skoll, or Happy Days Mint, tobaccos you enjoy without smoking. Take that, Cincinnati!